privilege to introduce our uh, workshop facilitator this morning. Uh, Sister Carolyn L. Williams is a member of Israel AME Church in Albany, New York. She's an educator with 46 years of dedicated work on behalf of children, families, and public schools. She has a BA in speech pathology and an MA in public administration from the University of Akron, Akron, Ohio. She is a certified elementary school educator in Ohio and New York State. Ms. Williams is an assistant in research and educational services for the New York State United Teachers and an expert in the policy areas of school improvement, mentoring, professional development, labor management, collaboration, and school leadership. She has served on several New York State Board of Regents work groups to develop statewide teaching standards, mentoring standards, and currently to create a framework for family, school, and community engagement to guide local planning and implementation. She uh, was the recipient of several awards for outstanding leadership and program development. And she's also a recipient of the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Professional Services. She's very active in her local church and serves with joy and gratitude as a steward, director of Christian education, vice chair of the finance commission, and PME director for the Albany Kingston Women's Missionary Society. She also served as local superintendent for 18 years and currently Western New York Conference superintendent for the past 15 years. She is guided by Psalms 38, I'm sorry, 32 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Let us welcome Sister Carolyn. Well, again, um, in the work that I do every day, I do a lot of professional development um, as part of my daily job. And so there have been some times when we have not been able to get the, uh, the technology to work. So we'll move forward and uh, hopefully Reverend Camille will be able to uh, get the PowerPoint and I'll be able to share it. So again, our topic today is making way for new leadership and teachers in the church school. So our conversation for this uh, um, next 40 minutes is for us to talk about basically three things. Reinforce why church school matters, why mentors matter, and why leadership development for new superintendents and teachers in the church school really does matter. So um, what we'll do while we're waiting for the uh, presentation, I want you to write in your chat room. I want to take a quick poll and see how many people have served as superintendents and for how long. So if you could write in the chat room, if you've been a superintendent for one to five years, five to 10 years, 11 to 20 years, or 21 to 30 years. Years one through five, we talk about in mentoring as the induction novice phase of, of our work. I see one to five coming up, five to 10. We can talk about those individuals as having some experience. Uh, 11 to 20 years as people who we could consider, oh, we see a less than a year, God bless you, six months, oh, this is wonderful. Just appointed last month, great, thank you. Uh, 11 to 20 years and 21 to 30 years. One of the things uh, over the past couple of years, whenever we offered the um, church school seminar, I started trying to collect some data so that we could really get some sense about how long people had really uh, served in the capacity either as a teacher or a superintendent. And what we found um, is that overwhelmingly uh, that most individuals working in the church school had really served as a teacher for 20 to 30 years, which was really interesting. Now I may look young, but as my uh, presentation <laughs> said, I see someone smiling. Um, 
I started teaching back in 1974. So you can see that I have been around for quite a while now. And I am uh, finally getting a social security check, which is really an amazing thing to be able to get a social security check in the mail every month. But I am continuing um, uh, in my work, both in the church and uh, in the field of education. So, um, so as I can see in the chat room, that we do have some uh, individuals who are relatively new to this wonderful, joyous job of serving in the church school in a leadership capacity. And I think I saw someone who said six months. And I'm wondering if a couple of those persons would be willing to just put in the chat room, especially if you're a newbie, so to speak, how, have, how that experience has been for you. Have you felt challenged? Are you still excited and overwhelmed? Um, if uh, some people could, who are new, could you write in the chat room quickly and just share your experience? Tell me whether you're excited about it, whether you're challenged, uh, do you feel prepared to be able to take on that uh, assignment and responsibility? So some people say they were challenged, um, very excited, all right, challenged and prepared. So Reverend Harris said he was challenged and very excited. Um, Daryl McLean said challenged and prepared. Um, Sharon Presley said, I am excited because I love God. God's word studied for many years. Okay. All right. So keep putting in the chat. Carolina, get back to us in a minute. Okay. Okay. So, um, so with that, and I heard a lot of challenges. I heard a lot of challenges. Uh, still learning as I go, have had moments of challenge and being overwhelmed, which is uh, very common. Anybody else? Let's see. Um, I'm excited because feeling challenged and out of my comfort zone and mm -hmm. learning, um, learning more on my own under okay, and leaning hard on my own understanding. Okay, great. So I think the the challenges and there are quite a few challenges in here. And first of all, I want to say thank you for admitting that you feel challenged uh, about, um, about being a superintendent because it is uh, a lot of responsibility. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, it is a lot of responsibility. So, um, okay, Reverend Camille, so we're gonna advance and uh, try to pick up a little, um, so keep moving forward. Okay, so stop, go back to the other slide. So one of the things that I, I do wanna emphasize, and I think we heard it this morning as well, that COVID-19 uh, is an opportunity for us to reimagine and think differently about church school and to see you know, the myriad opportunities that we have again to reimagine some of the work that we do. And this session is really about how do we support uh, superintendents? We know that pastors and superintendents have to work closely together. We also know, if you could go to, uh, to the next uh, slide, uh, but we also know and we see in the chat room that we are making way for new superintendents, for new leadership, and it's perfectly okay for people to feel challenged uh, in the work that they're doing. So again, when we think about making way, it's allowing room for someone or something else. Now, when you look at those synonyms and it talks about moving aside, we're not necessarily talking about stepping away um, those of us who are in the experience or veteran realm of this work, but making a way for someone else so that we can work together during this time 
of supporting and developing leadership in the church school. Next. So we, we all understand this church school um, uh, is workers in the church school, that the mission of the church school is extremely important. And I always talk about our mission as the heart and purpose of the work that we do. And that there are a lot of verbs in our mission, teaching, training, uh, nurturing, preparing uh, individuals. And so there are a lot of action words in our mission. But this is really the heart and purpose of the, um, of the church school. And it's not that we're trying to reimagine the mission. The mission is clear, but we're trying to reimagine. And I thought the presentations this morning by the church schools, it really did emphasize how COVID and, and these kinds of situations do present opportunities for us to do things in a very different way. So um, So this is just a reminder about why church school matters and why the work that we have all committed to do uh, with joy and gratitude, uh, why church school matters. And I'm not gonna read this, but I think you can see that the church school is extremely, extremely important for all of our students in a variety of different ways. And so um, when we look at um, how through church school that our students encounter Jesus, and that is the most important piece. But one of the things that we have to emphasize is that Church school matters and it still works, okay? Next. And so we've had a chance to do this poll question, thank you. So here's, here's the other bit of challenge for us in uh, as church school, as clergy, and um, as superintendents who are trying to you know, lead the effort around church school, is that we have two, two groups. The older adults who are often the largest group in many of our church schools, and then young adults and, and kids who are often missing or have moved on from church school. But you know, Dr. Earl Jefferson, and I use this um, reminder from his work when he talks about the fact that as the church school goes and grows, their goal grows and goes the church. So when we, um, this is a way for us to, to be reminded that these two groups are extremely important to the church school. And so we have to find ways, especially with the young adults, to uh, bring those young adults, those teens, those college students, those young people, back into the church. And we also have to prepare them, especially in the church school for leadership because church school matters so much. Okay, next. So uh, the qualities of a church school leader and teacher, and these are just, this isn't exhaustive, but here are some qualities of a church school leader and teacher. You know, a heart for God, a love for people, a passion for God's word, and a habit of praying. So one of the things, if we go to the next slide, I want you to put in your chat box for you to think of a young person who would make a great church school teacher or leader. So think about someone who's currently not, you know, actively involved, but for you to think about if we were going to begin to grow um, our next generation of church school teachers and leaders. Give me the name of, a, I see, okay, Tamika, give me the name of a person who, Dominique, okay, someone who would make a great church school teacher or leader. Noel, okay, Isaiah, Naya, okay, anybody else? 
Glenda Robert Nixo. Is that how you pronounce his name? Okay, Jacob. Okay. So I want you to think about this young person. And I want you to think about how, if we were able to create a leadership academy, is this the person who you would invite to that leadership academy? So we want to talk about that as a strategy for us to, you know, create and support the next generation of church school teachers and leaders. Next slide. Even though I have been uh, involved in, um, in the church school, to be perfectly honest, I was really a reluctant person uh, when I uh, came to Israel AME Church 37 years ago. Even though I was a teacher, I was very, very reluctant to take on the responsibility, but it was really Grace Green. She was the person who came not only to me, but the generation of individuals in our church who, um, who are now serving in the church school. And she, she said one thing to me and others. She said, we need you. It was just those simple words. So we want to talk about reimagining, reimagining intentionally who, what, and how we view and support teaching and leadership in the church school. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just ask this question, and you can put it in the chat box. Why do you think I said reimagining re intentionally? What does that mean? What do you think that means? Anybody? You can either put it in the chat or strategy and purpose, okay? Being intentional, come away from tradition, okay? Purposeful, reimagining in a way that leads to goals, gives direction. That's right. Thank you. Intentional, okay. Taking real thought into who, what, and why you are doing something. Strategic planning, thank you. Rethinking, thank you that we have an expectation to change, rethinking how you engage. So absolutely, and everybody hit it on the nose. Finding new ways using modern technology to come to the new norm, collaborating and rethinking, excellent. So these are all of the kinds of things that as we um, accelerate uh, through the presentation that I think that we're gonna highlight. So we need to be very intentional in how we are how we reimagine how we are going to support um new leadership and support bringing in the next generation because there are really two parts to this as we saw in the chat room we have a lot of uh new um superintendents who are very new to this work and they bring with them both energy, excitement, uh, passion, creativity, but they also feel challenged. And so one of the things that we have to do is to find very intentional ways to support individuals. Some people subscribe to the notion of just throwing people into the fire and, you know, let them learn, uh, learn the hard way or learn through experience. And that's absolutely true. But when we talk about supporting uh, leadership, that we have to find intentional ways uh, to help people get better at what they're doing. So let's move to the next uh, slide. So here's some questions. Does your church and church school give young people real opportunities to lead on stuff that matters? Put in the chat box, what do you think some of the stuff that matters is? Do we give young leaders access to watch real leadership take place and discuss and reflect on what they saw. Because discussing and reflecting and doing it in an intentional and purposeful way, that is an important element of helping people learn how to be leaders within the church school. 
And we also have to remember that we also have to give people an opportunity to learn from their mistakes, okay? Mm -hmm. And then expect young, young leaders to learn on their own through their own experience, or do we provide coaching? Coaching and mentoring are very different, but one of the things that when we start to talk about coaching, coaching really involves things that are actionable. Training is important, absolutely. And that training has to be of a higher substance though. Sometimes, you know, we can have training for training's sake. Um, but for me, what I am constantly trying to get, you know, new teachers to do is to really do some serious reflection, okay, about how they are um, engaging with students, how they are um, engaging with families, how they are engaging and looking at their practice and reflection is key. So next slide. So part of uh, what we want to do through the church school and Jean talked about this is for us to again be intentional and for us to create and provide people with some resources for mentoring. So whether it's the conference superintendent who is doing the mentoring or whether you have a person within your church who is your mentor, we wanna make sure that our superintendents have an opportunity to be mentored. Next slide. And someone's uh, phone is coming through. So any definition of a mentor that you have and put in the chat room, uh, put in the chat room about um, mentoring. Um, have you ever experienced mentoring? And what was your experience as a mentee? So put in the chat room as we talk about this. So one of the things that um, when we talk about mentoring, I always talk about mentoring uh, from the lens of this person expressing hope and optimism for the future. And, and uh, when, we, when we talk about that, and especially I'm going to talk about public school teachers quite a bit, um, when we talk about mentoring, oftentimes people will say, but I need to evaluate that person. Uh, and I need to supervise that person. The best mentoring relationship is for that person to be there to express hope and optimism for that their mentee's uh, future. Does that mean that um, through what I call the caring conversation, I stopped uh, being, uh, uh, being the local church school superintendent, we've had three new individuals. And so I am trying to also provide mentoring. And most of that relationship is about asking them questions about so that they can reflect on their own performance. Consider group mentoring so there's collaboration. And one of the things that we want to do when we talk about um, moving forward within the first district is to provide opportunities for all of the new superintendents across the Severn conferences to meet periodically so that we can do that group mentoring and put people into breakout rooms and to have an so that they can have an opportunity to talk to each other, um, but to, to create a, uh, a support system of other new uh, superintendents. Does that make sense? Is that something that people are interested in? Let's, let's hear in your responses in the chat room. Uh, go to the next slide. That sounds great, great. Very interested, good. Okay, great, great. Perfect. So now I want you to throw in, in the chat room, who was your mentor? 
And why was that person important in your life? I talked about Grace Green. She was one of my mentors as I started in the church school. Um, very good idea, especially for small family churches. Absolutely, Reverend, um, Reverend Riley. So just throw the name of your mentor, if you have been the beneficiary of a mentor, just throw their name in the chat room and maybe put a dash and say inspiring, encouraging, but put that in the chat room while we move to the next slide. Let's see who your mentors are. So uh, again, this is just a way for us to emphasize the role of the mentor and why that person, uh, it's imp important for that person to express hope and optimism for the future. Boy, I see some really good mentor names coming up here. Um, and so when we were talking about what it means to be intentional, we have to make sure though that the mentoring experience that we provide as we rethink and reimagine how to develop leadership within the church school, that it is a means and a strategy and an approach to support leadership development. Um, it's important for us to also think about it as a two-way street personal commitment. I see some of these uh, uh, descriptors of uh, mentors coming up. And so we want to accomplish these things for current superintendents. We want other superintendents to, to participate in supporting and mentoring um, new superintendents. We want to take, um, not exploit, but we want to capitalize on the expertise of the experienced and veteran superintendents um, but we also want to make sure that new superintendents, warm, caring, we want to make sure that, that the current group of young superintendents also have an opportunity to collaborate and to provide support to each other. So next slide. So we also want to think about this new generation. Of, um, of individuals that we need to try to get into our churches and into church school um, and to begin to tap into their leadership and teaching potential as well. So here are some possibilities. Young people who grew up, who grew up in church school but have moved away. I think we all know some young people um, that fit that bill. My own daughter uh, moved away to Charlotte and she, while she goes to church someplace else, she still has a very strong connection to Israel AME. So how could I tap into her uh, leadership? Hopefully she'll come back home one day, but probably not. <laughs> uh, but we can still tap into that kind of leadership potential. And this is one of the, the possibilities that COVID has, has uh, opened up for us, that we don't need to have everybody in the same physical space anymore, right? So we can tap into um, young people who have, who grew up in our churches and church schools, but have moved away. We also need to think about how do we reach out to college students from area colleges especially those who are in teacher prep programs or the helping professions. This is where we should begin to think about how do we create partnerships with organizations that have tons of young people who, um, who again, could help grow our churches and we could utilize their, um, their passion to God because a lot of these kids are at uh, the, um, um, are at the institution away from their families. And oftentimes they are looking for some connection with a church. And then again, partnering with an area college to create a tutoring program. One of the biggest needs right now during COVID is for families who are doing remote 
learning with their kids. And by and large, black and brown families have opted to, um, for remote study and not to send their kids uh, back into schools. And one of the things that we see is that those families who are opting to keep their kids at home and do remote learning, um, they are benefiting from the fact that their kids aren't getting suspended, they're not going to the office, and for a while there's a pause on the school to prison pipeline. So next slide. So do you see these as potentially some possibilities for how, um, for how we can also, the military, if you, you live in a military town, many of the military folk who are Christian, thank you, that's another, that's another place for us to try to make some connections with. Now we heard Reverend Beelan this morning and I thought he was fabulous. And when we think about the Liberating Faith Studies series and what it highlights, hope to the uh, hopeless, liberty to the oppressed, freedom to the captives, these lessons translate um, as a way to address some of these issues around Black Lives Matter, income disparity, poverty, school to prison pipeline, civic and social justice, family and community engagement. And while we tend to think because young people sometimes are missing from our churches, but they are very interested in these kinds of issues and especially kids who went to church. So we have to capture now the opportunity that we have to appeal to young people who either grew up in the church or young people who did not grow up in the church to be able to engage with them through church school as well as leadership development around you know, all of these various issues. And that's one of the wonderful things about the liberating faith studies. And I really agree with um, Reverend Beelan about the focus of those studies. Reverend Stenhouse, supportive, open to new ideas, empowering, provided funds needed for the church, absolutely. So next slide. So this is another uh, this is another opportunity as well for us through the church school to um, address leadership and and some of our teaching needs. Now I'm not sure that, and I don't know if everyone is aware that now, um, and actually, I'm sorry, this is wrong. This should say that 80% of public school teachers are white, female, and middle class. We no longer, so that should be 80%. 80% of all public school teachers in the United States are white, female, and middle class. And so church school, uh, we should begin to think about how our Someone said, "What? Wow! Absolutely, Reverend McCullen. This is absolutely true. Eighty percent of all teachers now are white, female, and middle class. And one of the things that the research clearly shows now is that children who encounter just one black teacher in their lifetime are more likely to do what? End up in gifted and talented programs." more likely to be viewed as capable of success and more likely to graduate from high school and go on to college. But that's the missing link. I'm involved in an initiative. I'm involved in an initiative now in New York State and I will be reaching out to uh, churches in New York State to support this initiative. It's called Take a Look at Teaching. And one of the things that we're trying to do is to create a pipeline for black and brown students. And we are working, we'll be working with community partners, churches, um, I only have five minutes left, churches uh, are going to be huge in this effort. Uh, next slide, Reverend um, Camille. So this is an article, and I hope you take the time to read this. But Part of the reason why we have so few black educators is because of the unintended consequences of Brown versus Board of Education. And so 
this is a reality. Um, the academic achievement gap um, has really contributed to this as well. And for all of us, we have to be very aware of the uh, preschool. It's no longer called the school to prison pipeline, but it's the preschool to prison pipeline because of the number of expulsions that have happened. It is so accurate. Thanks for it. Yep, standardized testing as well. And the fact that kids do have more career opportunities. And I agree with that. But we want to highlight, though, that with because the pipeline in terms of kids who have graduated from high school, the achievement gap, yes, uh, kids have more opportunities for careers, but the pipeline is, has, um, is, is very uh, small now. So we need to broaden that pipeline. So I only have five minutes, and so I wanna get to a couple other points about how we can move forward. Reverend Camille, um, so this is what we want to also implement. I have three minutes, okay. Is the Next Gen Church School Teacher and Leadership Academy. We want to create this leadership academy. So uh, move to the next slide. I'm gonna have you move to a couple slides. We're gonna skip past this because we, and I'll send the PowerPoint to everyone, but go so that we can see what that leadership academy can look like. Uh, okay, so stop right here. So one of the things, remember all of the names of those young people who you put in the chat room? We want to begin to think about how we can and have you identify even more young people, potentially starting off by identifying one or two who we would invite to take part in the Next Gen Church School Leadership Academy. We want to ask college students from your church who are in teacher prep programs, uh, who are, yeah, 80% of teachers are white. Right, uh, remember I said that that was a mistake, right? I got it flipped, but it's 80%. And when you read that article, it will talk about that and I can send some other information as well. So we also wanna reach out to college students and we will, we have begun a youth leadership council, excellent, and we can tap into your model of your youth leadership council, but we want to bring young people from across the conference together for some online leadership academy work, where we will design the curriculum and the engagement activities in a way that people will be excited. When you saw the technology presentations, the one about the butterfly, I thought that was about as creative as the day is new. Um, so we want to be able to create the online academy so that we are engaging young people around the issues that they um, are passionate about. And then, of course, we also will be providing mentoring and intentional support to new uh, superintendents. So unfortunately, I am out of time. Uh, any questions, you can throw them in the chat room and I'll have a chance to look at those. So a couple things. There's a, another slide at the end, um, Reverend Camille. I have written a, a mentoring guide and everyone will receive a copy of the mentoring guide. So stop, go back to the, to the other slide. No, don't click on this, I would love. So moving forward, final thoughts and questions. Clergy and superintendents and other youth leaders, I want you to, to meet to discuss what you've heard today. I want you to also think about creating partnerships with colleges and teacher prep programs, and I can help with that. Um, I'll have the mentoring guide on the website so that you'll be able to use that guide in your local church with uh, your new superintendent. And then we will be convening uh, a work group to talk about the next steps regarding the Leadership Academy. So I'm sorry we got off to a slow start and I didn't get a chance to say everything that I wanted to say, but uh, do you have any questions that you wanna write in the chat room? 
Yeah, it's it's we are finished, so I'm gonna stop sharing at this point. Okay. Yeah, and they're probably gonna remove us any second. Right. It's, yeah, we have fifty. Fifty six okay. seconds. Okay. Fifty six seconds. Okay. Uh, the the uh, the mentoring guide uh, is a user friendly guide, and it's a work in progress. So we will be sending, I will be sending that out to everyone uh, and to all of the, um, the new superintendents. Uh, we really want to say thank you. Thank you so much for listening to God's call on your life, listening to that call on your life. And so uh, everyone today, I will make sure that you get uh, a copy of the mentoring guide. Actually, we're just gonna send it to everyone so everybody will have it, but also go to our website, um, the first district website for the church school and it will be posted there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.